Hi, this is Miss Mason Explains Social Psychology and Group Behavior. Hope everybody's enjoying the snow day. Please be safe and have some fun. All right, so today we're going to be talking about group behavior. So we've already talked about conformity and obedience, but there are other ways that our behavior can change because we're in a group. We have social facilitation, social loafing, de-individualization, group polarization, and group think. So let's talk about these now. Social facilitation. Have you ever been on a team or you're performing and you feel like, man, I did so much better because my parents were watching, my friends were watching, my teachers were watching, you know, there was a, a recruiter watching me, okay? So social facilitation is when your performance is intensified because you're being observed by others. All right, we know experts are gonna excel. Doing simple activities, you can show more speed and endurance in front of an audience. So um, it's kinda awesome, especially um, if you're running like a race, like when I ran the Army 10 miler, when I ran my um, half marathon in, um, in Afghanistan, I ran so much faster when we were around people and then when there was like no one watching me, like I definitely slowed down. All right, um, but we do see with social facilitation that if you're a novice, if you're you're not skilled at it, but you try to do a more intense skill, um, you might do worse. Okay, you guys know I love the Ravens. Okay, so um, why would the presence of an audience facilitate better performance for everyone but newcomers? What do you think? All right. Well, it's because when you're being watched, you have an increased motivation if you're confident in yourself. But remember, like if you're not confident in yourself, you're going to feel all that anxiety. And remember what we learned about the Yerkes and Dotson law. Um, if you're already at the peak of your anxiety, right? If you're already, you know, super um, um, anxious and aroused you already know you're at the peak of your performance and it's just gonna go down from there. So the Yerkes and Dotson Law makes social facilitation possible. All right, social loafing. How many of you have ever worked in a group project with a group grade and had someone in your group slack off? I know all of you can say, yes, Miss Mason, we have, we have experienced this. Well, if you have, you have experienced social loafing. And this is where when you're in a group of, um, and you're working all together, sometimes this happens <laughs> where individuals will uh, show less effort because they're not being held individually accountable. Okay. So and I love this picture with this, this one girl who will know if I'm not pulling as hard as I can. No one can tell how hard each of us is pulling on the rope. So, um, yeah, so we've all experienced so thrill loafing. So why does it happen? Well, it can happen if you think that your contribution isn't rewarded or punished. You, you don't care what people think. Um, you may not feel that your contributions are needed. You know, if you're if you feel like oh, all of these people in my group are like the super smart kids, and I'm not the super smart kid, you may feel oh, well, I'll just sit back and let them do everything. Um, so you just sit back. Um, you can feel uh, to cheat when you get an equal share of the rewards anyways. I mean, we're all going to get A's because we have the super smart kid in our group, you know. So um, it's definitely an interesting phenomenon that happens in individualistic um, societies, but in collectivist cultures, we don't slack off as much. Um, and why? why? Why do you think that is? Think about it. Collectivist cultures, they're all about the group, the group goal, okay? So collectivist cultures, we don't have as much as social loafing because we're all trying to make the, the group goal, we're trying to bring honor to the family, we're trying to, you know, um, contribute as much as we can. All right, so then we have de-individualization. Now, de-individualization is something that is very frustrating for myself um, because it's when, like, you lose all self-awareness and self-restraint because you're in 
a group. I want you to think of riots, the KKK rallies, when you're in a concert, identity concealing online bullying. And this happens because when you're in a group situation um, or um, when you're, uh, how do I say this, when you're um, anonymous, you, you can do whatever you want. There's, there's no self-restraint. Nobody knows who you are um, for the KKK. I mean, you're wearing a mask. For riots, you're one of a million people, you know? So you're, you're going to have de-individualization where you don't feel like anyone can see you. They don't know who you are. You're just one of the mob, okay? So that's de-individualization. And then we have group polarization. And this is really funny because this is when people of similar views form a group together, they discuss within the group, and because they're making a discussion within their individual group, it makes their views more extreme. Where do we see this? We see this in, wait for it, yes, our wonderful Congress, all right? So, um, if you have different groups, they become more different, more polarized, and so, it's, it's extremely frustrating because you have group polarization. Look, they become even more polarized, okay? Because it's going to strengthen your pre-existing attitude. It's going to make you more aware. You're going to feel more energized, okay? And so you're going to uh, polarize even more. All right. Group think. Now, this one's kind of interesting. Um, because I think we, we experience this a lot, but we don't want to admit it. And this is when we try to avoid open disagreement. We try to make sure that, oh, let's just go along with the group um, because we don't want to go against the group. Okay, so we're going to say, yeah, sure, no problem. But individually, like by myself, I'm going to be like, no, that was like the stupidest idea ever. Okay, so I love this um, cartoon. You know, you're at a board meeting and they say, say it ain't so, you gotta be kidding, perish the thought, heaven forbid, no, 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 a thousand times no, and then what do they all say? I, 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 okay. So with groupthink, you can avoid groupthink, but you have to have that confidence. You have to be willing to stand up and be that individual that says, wait, 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 this is not a good idea. This is not a good idea. And we have seen some of these people. Um, and despite all of these social influences, conformity, obedience, um, group think, social facilitation, social loafing, because of all of this, we do have individuals who still have the power to resist obeying and conforming, who can start social movements and 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 not get caught up in um, following the group. You know, we have Martin Luther King Jr. I mean, he was arrested how many times? He was, you know, called so many different names. And then we have Gandhi here, and Gandhi, I mean, he started a social movement even when, like, everyone just disagreed with him, all right? so. If you are ever in the situation of groupthink, all right, where everybody is agreeing with the um, with the group just because, guys, you can speak up when the group decision seems wrong. You can speak up. Just make sure that you know what you're talking about and that you're confident. Okay, all right. And one thing I wanted to talk about, um, but I don't think. We're going to talk about this when we come back to school. Is social loafing and group work? So I want to know what you guys think. All right. So on your note sheet, I want you to write down some notes um, of what you're thinking because we're going to have this um, discussion when we come back. So if social loafing and group work is such a problem, why do us teachers still assign group work? Do you think we should stop assigning group projects altogether? Why or why not? If group members must evaluate each other, do you think that will help minimize social loafing? Why or why not? Um, would assigning group roles minimize social loafing? Again, why or why not? And how can group members motivate each other to do their best doing group work? So I want you to come up with uh, just some bullet answers for these five 
uh, discussion questions that we're going to talk about when we come back um, to school. So your homework, all right, your homework, complete module 77 and 78 reading questions. Your unit 12 exam, the multiple choice and the FRQ are still going to be next Wednesday, no matter when we come back to school. And hopefully, whenever we come back, we'll talk about prejudice and aggression. So I hope everybody stays nice and warm and enjoys the uh, snow day. I'll see you guys when we return to school.